In 2008, I did something kind of horrible. I picked up this rock from the ground. Why does this make me a terrible person? Because it's actually not a rock. It's part of a brick. And the place I picked it up was an ancient Roman fort. I kind of stole from an archaeological site. That belongs in a museum! I know! Sorry. But I couldn't help myself. Because 2,000 years ago, another human being held this brick. He spoke a language that no longer exists. He paid for this in a currency that no longer exists. He worshipped gods that no longer exist. He used a measurement of time that no longer exists. And he was a citizen of one of the most amazing civilizations that has ever been on this planet. That no longer exists. And I'm sure that as he laid this brick down and put another brick down on top of it, he never could have imagined that a hundred generations later, a guy living in a part of the world he's never even heard of could talk about this brick and that that message would travel further around the world in a single instant than his glorious civilization had spread in a thousand years. A lot can happen in two millennia. To try to plan something out that far would be an exercise in futility. Hell, most of us can barely plan out what we're going to eat tonight. But for a small group of people, 2,000 years is just a drop in the bucket. They're thinking 10,000 years ahead. And they want all of us to do the same thing. Randall Everett asked, what modern structures are most likely to stand the test of time? Ancient Egyptians built pyramids that were meant to last until the end of time. And so far, so good. Today, I live in Dallas and a building that's 50 years old is considered a historical artifact. Most of us just live generally in the present moment, concerned only with our own lifespans, which in the big picture of things is a mere blink of an eye. But there's a group that wants to change that. They're called the Long Now Foundation, and their method for doing so is a clock. A clock that's going to tick for 10,000 years. It's called the clock of the long now. And it's a big time idea. See what I did there? Nailed it. The Long Now Foundation was created in 1996. It was the turn of the millennium and everybody's minds were focused on the future, but nobody more so than Stuart Brand, Danny Hill, and the musician and artist Brian Eno. They had the idea to build a monumental clock that would last 10,000 years in order to promote long-term thinking. But how the hell do you build a 10,000 year clock? Well, they started with a set of parameters, including longevity. The clock should be accurate even after 10,000 years and must not contain valuable parts such as jewels, expensive metals, or special alloys that might be looted. Maintainability. Future generations should be able to keep the clock working, if necessary, with nothing more than advanced Bronze Age tools and materials. Transparency. The clock should be understandable without stopping or disassembling it. No functionality should be opaque. Evolvability. It should be possible to improve the clock over time. And scalability. To ensure that the final large clock will work properly, smaller prototypes must be built and tested. The thing that I find interesting about these design parameters is that it takes into account both the engineering and social challenges of this machine. You know, would people want to steal from it? Would people be able to understand it? Would people be able to repair it even if society got knocked all the way back to the Stone Age? They had to account for every single variable, both in nature and in humanity. You know, these people probably won't be able to speak the same language that we do. They may not even be the same species. The main engineering challenges were, of course, in longevity. How do you power something for 10,000 years and how do you keep it accurate for that amount of time? More complex power solutions had to be thrown out because it had to be manageable by people who had no knowledge of technology whatsoever. So things like nuclear and solar were out. They came up with an ingenious solution that used the difference in temperature between night and day to power the clock. Oh, and did I mention it's inside a mountain? It's inside a mountain. It's inside two mountains, actually, in very dry, arid regions where the difference in temperature between night and day is really extreme. One of those areas is in Texas on land that belongs to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Construction's already begun on the mountain, which is kind of a two-scale prototype of the main clock, the Big Mama Jama, which will be built into a mountain in southern Nevada. Actually, it's, it's Nevada. I don't know if it's southern Nevada. I just It rhymed, and I wanted to get the number of syllables correct. Funky Fresh and making nail rhymes all the time. Two smaller prototypes have already been built, one of which is housed at the Long Now Foundation headquarters, and the other is in the Science Museum of London. So, the temperature of the mountain can keep this bad boy going, but is that enough? Well, it turns out it doesn't take much power for the clock to keep time, but it does take a little bit of power for it to display the time. So anybody who wants to view the display on the clock has to wind it up first. That's kind of the price of admission. But they'll be rewarded with something really cool. A chime will play that has been mechanically rigged by an algorithm created by Brian Eno so that every single chime is different. For 10,000 years, every single person that hears this chime will hear a different chime. But what this person sees as they're hearing this chime, how the time is displayed, is a whole other dizzying conundrum all its own. For starters, you can't just say the year 2015, because the four-digit year won't make any sense after the year 10,000. 
Therefore, you have to display the year as 02015. In fact, the same issue that caused all that panic in the year 2000, the Y2K crisis, could rear its ugly head even more so in the year 10,000. They're already starting to call it the Y10K crisis. But what if society completely breaks down and they have no idea what those numbers mean? Well, they've included a star field on there, because while a lot of things might change on Earth in 10,000 years, the stars are going to be pretty much the same. But let's consider that possibility again for a second, because I find this really fascinating. Consider that society completely collapses. In some time, 10,000 years in the future, some future civilization comes across this device that seems to count the days for some reason. Would they assume that it was built at year zero on the device instead of 2,000 years later? Maybe they'll think that it's counting forward to a specific date in the future, like some kind of doomsday date, like we look at the Mayan calendars or something. Maybe they'd think it was put there by the gods and it becomes some kind of holy shrine. An entire religion could spring up around what these guys are building. Or maybe it'll just be an interesting relic of the past. A place where people can go and hold in their hands things that people built thousands of years before, and they'll think about how people back then could have never even imagined the wonders of the world that they live in now. And that is the very point of the clock of the long now, to get people to think in long time frames, not just today, but for the entire time that it runs. And that is a big time idea. Hey, if this is something you never heard about before and you learned something, hit the like button. And if this is your first time here and you like it, put a ring on it and hit subscribe. Speaking of time, I'm not sure how well that Beyonce reference is aging. If you've got a question you'd like answered, you can ask it in the comments below or hit me up at Joe Scott Ryder on Twitter and we can blow some minds together. The world's a fascinating place and I'm here to share all that interestingness with you. So go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Take care.